Good afternoon everyone, I'm back again with another episode of Second City Wrestling, local to global challenge for TW9. Um, thank you as always for people who have been watching this series and also the AW Ring of Honor series. Much appreciated, my views are increasing and the watch time is increasing all the time. So I really appreciate the support that you lot are bringing to me. Um, on that note, we'll just quickly go through the previous couple of shows so i think it's this one is it no actually we'll just go through from the beginning so we look at the gradual progression over the year if you look at the attendance as well and also i think mostly the overall show rating has been better each time but yeah like i said sell out for that one 196 214 and then we had a 250 sell out so that means this show we probably need to get a bigger stadium to or arena whatever they call it to fit everybody in um we'll just look at the creative so at the moment calvin tankman is our champion and he is our number one star rhino is second gringo loco is third kylie ray is four and then frontman ja is five if here i'm a bit disappointed because frontman ja's pro mobility suddenly disappeared since we've increased in popularity which is annoying but that's just how it is on this game sometimes um and then hot prospects we've got bastard cassidy tristan ty and eli Eisen. so we won't go all into that because that'll bore the hell out of you we'll just have a look at the champions at the moment so calvin tankman's the champion he is um he's had one successful defense so far and then the tag team champions um are mad don conley and lord crew um can't remember what their tag team name is but they've had two successful defenses so far and then kylie ray who recently won the title because of the fact that heather reckless who i was pushing is never available when we're doing shows so she's she got stripped of the title now we have a new champion in kylie ray who i think is actually a better worker um than basically heather reckless so i mean like i said if it, if it was up to me if i wasn't doing um just local wrestlers i would have, i would have grabbed millie mckenzie by now because she is probably the one of the best female workers on here when you're a small promotion she's amazing um she's absolutely smashing it in my offline fight club pro save i'm doing which is a uk promotion based in wolverhampton west midlands area for people who don't know um so yeah so that she's doing really well there and i've also brought her in to my aw save um she is going to be on the aw roster so yeah anyway right i think there was one more thing yeah i want to have a look i can't remember what they're called the killers there you go not a very, not exactly the most best name for a sad team but they'll do um they're part of a, a stable so if we just go through the stables the stables are a bit loose at the moment. I kind of just put like as many people as possible in the same stable. I need to get rid of Cornelius because he's in a babyface tag team with Colt Cabana. So we'll get him out there. I think Two Lynn needs to be out of this group as well because she's more of a babyface. I haven't got any, um, like, what am I trying to think? Uh, there's no heels or, or babyfaces. They're just the same basically they're just they're just everybody's a tweener pretty much there's no set roles um and then we've got the iron lords which is a steel as the leader again very loosey loose here um i might use it as a, a way of pushing bastard cassidy who's a hot prospect so that might start today but we'll see how it goes anyway we've got our first event of the sh uh, of the episode so let's just go through the pre-match, the pre-show stuff. So yeah, so we had a sell-up last time, so we need to increase this. So we'll go 350, go 270, nothing. That's not good. 300? Let's try 300 then. Empty, okay. Uh, 400? Okay, so we've got this one, the Shetler at St. Andrew's Hall in Michigan, Detroit um 300 pounds it'll cost us but it can have 400 i think that's a bit too much too soon do you know what i'm gonna go back go 300 250 we'll just stay with this one for now we'll get a couple of sellouts here 
and then oh balls i accidentally skipped that i didn't mean to do that right um training and then we had tutti lynn lifted the locker room when she organized and then won a video game tournament um boomer hatfield and ace perry were really getting on well backstage their good mood was infectious and lifted everyone's spirits i might put them in the tag team and we'll see how we go apparently the pair of cornelius crummles and lee johnson have been hanging out a lot recently okay right so what i'm thinking then to start the show is if i can remember before i completely blank i've already forgot <laughs> i've already forgot the two um it was lee john it was cornelius Crummles, Lee Johnson, and then it was Ace Perry, and who was the other one? It'll come to me in a second. Boomer Hatfield, there we go. Right, so we'll put these we'll put these in the tag match. You never know. We might get really good chemistry with them. We'll go that, we'll go uh we'll go steal the show, sod it, see how it goes. Open match, all that match. Let's hope for the best. Right, okay. Um Next match, we'll do some storyline stuff here because we have got storylines, even though they're kind of loose. So we've got Frontman Jav versus Rhino. So what we'll do is we'll do a four-way singles match. And then what we'll do is, yeah, we'll go Frontman Jav, Rhino, Cole Cabana, and... Shane Taylor. We'll have them four in a match. We'll go we'll go fifteen minutes because I don't think either of them can go twenty minutes all out pace. We'll go open match, all out match, we'll go storytelling. So actually do you know what? No we won't we'll go mayhem. We'll go mayhem. Broadcaster cannot also the oh okay right um there we go that fixes that right then so that's that sorted and then what we'll do is we'll have rhino attack frontman jar after the match um serious surprise storyline development there we go i only come across this um the other day I've been leaving it on serious every time I do it. So Rhino attacks. Yeah. We'll just leave this up. And then we'll just go. There we go. All right, sorted. Um I completely forgot that I was meant to do this offline and then come to it, but I've already literally finished, so we might as well just do this. We'll do this first show where I'll book it live and then I'll the next show I'll book offline and then come back when I've finished it. Right. And then what we'll do is we need a women's match, I reckon. We'll go three-way women's match. So this this event this event will probably cost us a fair bit. So we'll go Kylie Ray, uh, Alice Crowley, and then ne uh, Nevia. We'll go twenty minutes. Title. Women's, and then we'll have um, we'll have Kylie Ray retain it. And I want to keep strong Alice Craw uh, Crawley because if Kylie Ray ever leaves us, I want her to be the the big baby face women's champion that we've got. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have Navia attack Kylie Ray after the match. So attacks Kylie Ray. Right, so that's that. We'll go we'll just have it as no, we'll just leave it as that. Right then, let's start the show. So the tag team of Cornelius Crummles and Lee Johnson defeated Ace Perry and Boomer Hatfield. Um Cornelius Crummles pinned Boomer Hatfield with the great expectations. How did they do? Right, so the second one got a forty eight, crowd was Mm, sort of into it 21 wrestling got a 40 the standout performer was lee johnson and then ace perry 
Uh, unfortunately, Boomer Hatfield and Cornelius Criminals are not very good. Um, but yeah, no no new superstar tag teams in the making by the looks of it, but it was worth a try. And in the second match, we had Frontman Ja defeating Rhino, Colt Cabana and Shane Taylor, which is a bit of a shock, really, because out of the four of them, he's probably the least popular, any when you think about the general fans. I'd, have, I'd assume Rhino would have won that one. Anyway, the second got a 45. Crowd was into it a little bit, 29. Wrestling rating got a 42. Um, Frontman Ja was the better worker out of the four, actually, so... Yeah, so that's good. Right. And then we had an angle afterwards. We got 48 for the segment. We had Rhino attacking frontman Jack after the match to carry on their storyline. Um, Kylie Ray, in the, sorry, in the next match, we had a three-way match for the women's title. Kylie Ray won that match. Um, 39 for the segment, 29 for the crowd, 41 for the wrestling. And um, Nevia was the standout performer, but... All three of them were relatively good. Um, Nevia seemed off her game. Alice Crowley and Ray Lynn are a good pairing, so that's good to know. And then afterwards, we had Nevia attack Kylie Ray, which got a 43 to finish the show. Right, so we've increased our popularity again, which is good to see. Overall rating was 39, which is slightly less than, I think, the last show or two. So we, need, need to, we do need to work on that. Um... And we got 239, so less than the sellout that we did at the last show as well. So that's something we need to work on as well. And the best segment of the night was the tag team match between Cornelius Crummels, Lee Johnson versus Ace Perry and Vuma Hatfield. So let's address the locker room. I think I'm going to go, yeah, give some encouragement to Vuma Hatfield and Cornelius because they're not very good. So hopefully that will help. And then the financial report, ticket sales, we, we made 1,673, we made 239 from merchandise, workers cost us 1,900, show cost was only 566, which ain't too bad, so overall loss was 664 pounds, um, sorry dollars, so we're still left with 10,797, popularity, we've made an increase in popularity now to... 25 we're nine in mid mid atlantic and the tri-state area as well which is good we're doing well considering we haven't got a tv deal now offline on my fight club pro save i um use that one as a way of testing out things on the game to then know what i'm doing with this save i'm doing on here and um i watched curb stomp city who by the way is probably the best tw content creator out there i'm just saying it um he's not paying me for that endorsement by the way but basically, um, he's very informative. I've learned a lot of stuff from him. Um, and during his save that he's doing, his local to global save, he got a TV deal with YouTube and it, it then ended up um, messing up his finances. So he had to cancel them very quickly. So on this particular save, I think I'm not going to get a TV deal for now. I mean, I can do. I mean, there's this one. Um, never heard of that one before. Raymix. So... Um, but yeah, there's YouTube, there's independent wrestling, there's High Spots Network. So we have got options, but we're just going to leave it for now. I think what I'm going to do is wait until I get to 30 in popularity um, and then look at see what available broadcasters there are out there. Um, we, we need to keep our finances in check because we also need to improve the production side of things. We definitely need to upgrade, but we just don't have the money to do that at the moment. But uh, actually, we can upgrade this one. I think five hundred. No, we can't. We can't upgrade. That's too much of a. That's two thousand. That's never happening. Can we upgrade the production values? No. So all the upgrades that we need for production, we just can't afford the the layout for it. I'm gonna see if I can join an alliance yet. If I haven't already, I don't think I'm in an alliance. Um, we can join the IWTV one. So I'm just going to see if there's any others first. We're not going to bother with National Wrestling Alliance. GCW is one I've joined just recently on my offline save with Pike Club Pro. And, um, so we'll try that one. I don't know. Ah, there we go. So we are in an alliance now with GCW, which also means that we can um, bring in wrestlers from them, but it will cost us, so we have to careful so we go propose alliance line we go game changer one called manders is that is that mark andrews no okay 
That's Mandrews, isn't it? Mark Andrews is Mandrews. Right. Um, Ali Catch might be a good one, but she wants £600 a show, so that's not happening. Billy Starks, 800 She would have been good. Like Blake Christian would have been good, but he wants too much. I think a lot of these ones that we want to bring in are just going to be too much to bring in, I think. Uh, Dan Housen, again, local lad, but costs us too much. That's why I haven't signed him on the save. Davy Bang, oh, I could bring him in anyway, to be honest. Dominic Garini, no. Effie's not too bad. 270 for Effie. He was pretty good independent wrestler. He's quite popular. So I think we'll ask to... There we go. So we've got Effie in, potentially. It just depends if they... See, he would be awesome. El Hojo Del Vikingo, one of the best wrestlers on the game. Um, but he, it's just way too much. Actually, how much did we... Oh, yeah, so it's, it's 270 plus 70. Okay. Uh, Fugo de Sol is unavailable and loan. Okay. Um, Gringo Loco, we've already got. Jack Cartwheel. No. Can't get in. Joey Janella. Jordan Oliver would be maybe. We'll leave him for now. We might look at just bringing one in at first show. Kurt Angle. I wish if he was a wrestler still, I'd bloody bring him in. Maki Ito is somebody I know from my previous Fight Club Pro Save. I brought her in and she became my champion, but. It's just too much money at the moment. Man like Doris, uh, UK wrestler, pretty good. I think I might look at bringing him in. He's a pretty good worker. Masha Slamovich, again, somebody I'd love to bring in, but way too much money for her. 1,300. Matt Cardona, again, another one I'd love to bring in, but just money. Just Megan Bain would be good, but too, again, too much. Let's just concentrate the ones we can. Oh, my God, Mike Bailey. Myron Reed, they've got a really good roster, J uh, GCW, when you think about it. Oh, Nick F. Engage, I'd love to bring him in, just have a hardcore match with him. Um, right. Richard Holiday, no, too much. Rina Yamahita, no. Shane Mercer, I've already got in the, on the roster. Steph Belinda, that's not, Steph Belinda, yeah, Steph Belinda, that's not too bad for her. Um, we'll leave it for now, though. Right, so we've looked at GCW. Let's have a look at let's have a look at this one. So this is a Lucha Libre. So I don't know who to Chavo Guerrero. Um, I don't know who to bring in that would be really good worker unless they just unless it's somebody I've seen before. But yeah, I don't I don't know who we're going to bring in here. I can have a look offline. And, and then see who I can bring in. Actually, Spiderfly, I remember him on my... I've got him in my AEW save. He's pretty good. So we'll bring him in as well. Right, so that's that group. Let's try this one. Bro Wrestling Freedoms. Never heard of them. Again, this is a roster of... Oh, I've heard of Jun Kasei. But I don't think he'd be... I don't think we do much deathmatch death match wrestling for him to be bringing in. Yeah, again, a lot of these wrestlers, I... Oh, Kawada. At least I've heard of Kawada. Right, okay. So we've got TNT, well, um, Ali Catch, 240. Yeah, we'll leave her for now. Big F and Joe. Clip Margera. So this one must be a British one, I think, on the looks of it. Dave Mastiff would be pretty good, but again, 400 is a bit too much. Drew Parker. Flash Morgan Webster. Oh, we're definitely going to bring him in. He is a really good wrestler. I wonder if Mark Andrews is here as well. Jody Fleisch. Yeah, we'll bring in Jody Fleisch. He's pretty good. Even at his age, he's still pretty good. Joey Hayes. No. Um, Joseph, Con Joseph Connors is pretty good. We're literally going to have a British um, British invasion here, aren't we? Kid Lycos. Sod it. I'm just going to go. <laughs> Kid Lycos too. Oh, right. Leon Slayer. Oh, my God. He's a brilliant. TNT's got a hell of a good rest, uh, hell of a good roster. Should we bring in Liam Slater as well? No, we'll bother. Lizzie Evo. She's pretty good, but she's... Uh, we can, oh, Manami Toyota. Mark Andrews, there. Oh, no, 600, I can't justify it, sorry. Nathan Cruz is pretty good, so we'll bring him in. 
They might not all see Rampage Brown again would be awesome. Rio's pretty good women's wrestler, but I just think we'll leave it. Ricky Knight Jr. is pretty good, but 500 first show is not. Can't justify it. Session Mark Martina is very popular, but again, £400 per show. It's not going to happen. Right, so that's TNT done. We won't bother with Zona because I know it's just a Mexican death match. Ross. Uh, so, yeah. Right, then. What I'm going to do then is obviously skip forward to the next show and I'll be back in a minute with the next part of the video. Right, we're back. There's nothing worth telling you about on the inbox items. Um, we've got 14,000... 536 I think we had about 11,000 so I think we're making about three grand a month which is nothing it, it it's pretty good when you think about it considering we're a small independent company um, the shows I would like us to at least break even on but that's just how it is I know if I add an extra show it's just going to add to the cost so we won't make any money I think we've made money from that alliance thing so let's have a look so last month because we're now in february we started with 11,272 we got 1,792 from performance 1,673 from ticket sales now if i did do an extra show would we get would it balance itself on because we'd get the same amount of ticket sales i don't know maybe i'll look into do, adding an extra show in the next episode and we'll see if that works sponsors wasn't too bad 3,810 uh merchandise we haven't made any money from like so i assume that alliance is one where we just don't make any money from which is a shame but at least it helps us get wrestlers in um and then this month we made so far 3276 we'll probably make about that much in ticket sales sponsors is about the same merchandise obviously we've got to take into account paying for workers um and other things as well for the next show coming up so we'll have a look our finances after this show right then, let's get cracking see how we get on um we need to put calvin tankman in the match he he didn't wrestle the last show and he's our champion so he definitely needs to wrestle tonight we're going to keep it as this one because we didn't get the sell out last time um I, how much have we got so right we've got 379 okay yeah, so our, our creator team is Cliff Compton, Atticius Koga, Alison Danger, and uh, Michael Blanton. So I think maybe we'll go creative finish. Okay, we'll do that. And then we'll go character idea. There's no restrictions, safe bet. Okay. So that's what we'll do. Right. Locker room incidents. Um, Justin Kyle has turned up and asked if he might be able to use him tonight he's an unemployed worker who happens to live nearby he's not worked at scw before um he's 39 years i've got driven personality which is what i like okay we'll bring him in i'll put him in on a match see how he does right uh danny ba danny sorry davy bang has brightened up the backstage area simply by being so cheerful and fun to be around um training training ah Flash Morgan Webster caused heat backstage when a mean-spirited rib called Nathan Cruz nearly led to a fight. Okay, so we'll just go find him for now. Address locker room, inspire. Right. And then what I'm going to do before I book the show, which I'm going to do offline, by the way, I'm going to remember. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to give this creative idea to Isaiah... Uh, Brona. There we go. Right. So that's that bit. I'm going to book the show and then I'm going to come back in a sec and we'll go, we'll do the show. I'll show you the show that I've booked and we'll get cracking with that. Right. I'm back with the first uh, match of the show. And in a pre show match, we had Isaiah Brona um, defeat Justin Kyle. Now, basically, I used the creative finish in this match and I used the I already used the character idea as well so it's just to give Isaiah Broner uh, a win um, and see how Justin Kyle does unfortunately he didn't do very well he only got 25 so he won't be coming back um, but the same got 34 crowd 
22 and 37 wrestling. Um, Isaiah Bo uh, Broner with a 49 rating and the creative finish was a success. Right, so next match. And then in the first match of, to kick off the proper show, we had Kylie Ray successfully defend her title against Mickey Knuckles in a match that was uh, had hardcore elements to it. Kylie Ray makes successful defense number two of the women's title. The segment got a 42, crowd 26, 39 for the wrestling. Uh, Kylie Ray was the better worker out of the two. Then we did a post-match angle to give some heat back to Mickey Knuckles, who attacked Kylie Ray after the match. And then we had a tag team title match where the Killers successfully defend their tag titles, defeating the Golden Gods, which is Golden Dragon and Ringo Loco. Um, Mad Dog Connolly pinned Golden Dragon. The second got 53, which is really good for us. Um, crowd 30, and the wrestling was 47. Um, Gringo Loco and Mad Dog Connolly were neck and neck, the best workers in the match. Fortunately, both Golden Dragon and Gringo Loco seemed off their game, which is a shame. Um, and Golden Dragon was a bit rusty as well. And then we did a post-match angle where the killers attack the Golden Gods after the match. Got 46 for that, so that's pretty good. Gunga Loco seems to have a superstar aura about him, which seems to do well for rating. So we probably need to put him in, in a big program with somebody, uh, a big storyline. But yeah, in the next match, we had Ace Perry defeating Jimmy Young with a German suplex into the super kick. The second got 52, 23 for the crown, 45 for the wrestling. Ace Perry was the better worker out of the two. Um, and then afterwards, we had Lee Johnson come down to the ring to cut a promo um, on Jimmy Yang. And Jimmy Yang also cut a promo on Lee Johnson after that. They went back and forth. Both um, liked the fact that they weren't scripted. So got 50 for the segment. And then in the main event, Lee Johnson defeated Flash Morgan Webster, Kid Lycos and Kid Lycos 2, Colt Cabana and Joseph Connors. When Lee Johnson pinned Kid like us with the one shot. The segment got a 39. The crowd were not into it all. 18. But I think that's because um, a lot of these wrestlers are going to be really unknown in America. So that's probably why. Um, the wrestling only got 38 as well. The best worker out of the, the lot of them was Flash Morgan Webster with a 45. <coughs> but yeah, we could have done a better main event I reckon. Um, we apparently used Kid Like Us 2 and Kid Like Us too much and also slightly overused Golden Dragon so we'll probably get penalties for that um, we did increase our popularity in one region we got an overall rating of 41 which was better than last time and we got 250 people in which I think was slightly better than the last show so that's good so Flash Morgan Webster will say good performance and we'll do Lee Johnson as well Oh, for God's sake. Oh, stupid mouse. Right, 26 we've increased our popularity by. Um, sorry, we've increased... Let me start again. We've gone from 25 to 26. I apologize. We've increased it by one. So we keep incre we keep increasing our popularity by every show. Um, sorry you couldn't see the financial report. I, I don't know if everybody is bothered about it as I am. I like to know how much we're making per show. And unfortunately, there's no way of going back after that. If there is, let me know in the comments section. I would appreciate the help. But I think we started the sh before the show. We were on about fourteen thousand. We're now on twelve thousand nine hundred. We lost about a thousand pounds, and I think it was mostly because the fact that the show had quite a few workers. Um, let's just have a quick look at the creative. So, Cal yeah, because Calvin Tankman couldn't wrestle on the show, he was booked elsewhere. Unfortunately, so if we're gonna have a situation with him not being able to. Um, wrestle I'm thinking pulling the trigger on Gringo Loco so we'll see how it goes oh sorry about that because that was really loud let me just sort that out before I carry on right so yeah so have we got any next big things yet no hot prospects are the same right we'll just leave that I don't think that really changes that much right so our next show is in 27 days so that'll be the last show of the episode let's just check the inbox items yeah, so the, the wrestlers have gone. We've still got a few left, I think. Um, did Effie wrestle? I think we've got Effie, so she he can wrestle the next show. 
So what I'm going to do is forward to the next show and I'll be back with the last show of the episode. Right, we're back for the final show of the episode. Um, apparently we've had a few of these gone um, because we didn't use them in the loan period, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Um, annoyingly, Calvin Tanton keeps signing one night deals different companies and I've got a feeling that he's he's not going to be available again so if that's the case I'm stripping him of the title but it's a shame because he is literally one of my best workers and it was so good to actually um, push him and it's just every time I push somebody they just become unavailable have a reckless Calvin Tantman if I put it on Gringo Loco is he going to start being booked elsewhere this is this is the unfortunate thing that happens when you do a save with a local to global uh theme because you, you you're starting at the bottom and your main rest wrestlers are going to go elsewhere um ace steel's relocated which is going to cost us a bit in travel expenses bringing him in now um velvet red velvet and blake christian announced they are now engaged so congratulations to them i didn't know they were going out of each in real life so fair play um i don't think there's anything else here oh isaiah bronan relocates oh he's in honor terror so we're gonna have to get rid of him which is a shame because we just recently pushed him. So, uh, where is it? Where is it? Contract? I don't think it's this one. I think I need to. Right, I'll do it in a second. Um, right, regional battle. So we finished last out of the four, which is not good. So that means our attendance is going to be reduced by 10%, which is not ideal. Right, roster. Isaiah Brona. I'm going to see if he'll move first. I'm going to ask him if he'll move. He probably won't because he only just moved. Um, talk to worker. There we go. Right. No. So he's not going to be with us any longer. Now, I would get rid of A Steel, but he is literally one of the Chicago's favourite wrestlers. Him at CM Punk and Conquer Manor and Sky Blue. So I can't get rid of him even if I wanted to. But um, we've got 16,425 in the bank. Let me just check the finances. So we made last month, we started with 13,000. We made just under 2,000 from performance, about 1,750 from ticket sales, 4,000 from sponsors, which I think is the most we've ever made from sponsors. It's going up and up gradually, which is good, but it's literally gone. It's gone from, I mean, that actually, no, that, that was, yeah, but if you look on here, it, it was only going up by a little bit and then it's gone from that to 200 to 300 to 100 and then yeah mm, i don't know i thought there was going to be a like a trend there where it goes up and up and up anyway um 640 from merchandise but that is definitely that at least that's at least i can say that's going up gradually bit by bit um workers cost us about 2830 569 for show cost Mer uh Production was 852. I think that's the thing that kills us um, not being able to break even every show. But it's only going to get worse because we're going to have to put our production up sooner rather than later. Right, so the heavyweight tot hasn't been defended in 119 days. So, right, we need to skip to this next show. That's a scary face, isn't it? Look at that. Right, uh, let's pick the arena first. Booking team meeting will... Leave that for this show. I'm not too bothered. The meeting sees uh, uh, Atius Koga and Alison Danger argue quite a lot, so I'm going to have to change that up in a bit. Eddie Loney has turned up, requested that he's allowed to be hanging backstage. He's an unemployed worker who happens to live nearby. He's 29 years old, free spirit type. Um, he has a deep friendship with Atius Koga and also Ricky Shane Page. So, yeah, we'll bring him in. Right. <clears throat> training. Training. Tissius Koga almost got in a fight with Silas Young, so we'll just fine you. Backstage rumour mill has been overdrive that Simon Dean and Ray Lynn have apparently got into a heated argument. That's not good. Bradley Prescott the fourth and Shane Taylor have apparently been hanging out a lot backstage. Right. So what I'm gonna do is to Oh, I'm doing I'm gonna do this offline, sorry. I just realised. Um, before I go offline for a second though, I want to see who's absent from the show. So Calvin Tankman is available, Heather Reckless is not. 
So that's good. At least we can have our world champion defend his title. So right, I'll be back in a minute with the show booked. Right, we're back for the last show of the episode. Hopefully it'll be a good one. Um, we had a tag team title match to start the show with the Killers defeating the newly formed, um, well, trying it out a tag team of Shane Taylor and Bradley Prescott, Prescott the fourth. So the reason why I did that is basically I got the notification to say that Shane Taylor and Bradley Prescott fourth have been hanging out a lot lately. So I thought, let's see if we can see if they're any good as a tag team. Um, unfortunately, they have they don't really seem to have any bad or good chemistry. So we'll leave it. But um, segment segment got a fifty one, crowd was twenty eight, and the wrestling rating was forty three. And the Mad Dog Conley was the better worker out of all four of them. Shane Taylor probably underperformed in a way, but it is what it is. Um, the next match we had Kylie Ray successfully defend her women's title against Alice Crowley, um, Nevia and Ray Lynn. When Kylie Ray submitted Ray Lynn with the crossface, the second got a 46. Crown was 27, wrestling was 39 and Kylie Ray was the best worker out of the lot. Um, that's fine. All right. And then after the match, we did a post-match beatdown from Nevia on Kylie Ray. Got 38 for the segment. We did a seven-minute promo with Frontman Ja that got a 51 rating. Um, the performance of Frontman Ja was fantastic. Unfortunately, Rhino underperformed, but Rhino was basically a non-speaking appearance. He, he, Frontman Ja literally didn't give him a chance to talk and walked off. So, yeah, not too bad of a segment there. Shame he's not getting the 70-odd rating he was getting before, but that's like I said, that's just how it is. And then in the main event, Gringo Loco defeated Calvin Tankman, Lee Johnson and Jimmy Young for the heavyweight title. Gringo Loco pinned Jimmy Young with the frog splash. Um, the match was designed to be engrossing, story-driven spectacle that was slowly built up through psychology and worked towards a dramatic conclusion. So Gringo Loco wins the heavyweight title, I pulled the trigger because Calvin Santman is keeps being unavailable all the time, which doesn't make it easy for me when it comes to long term booking. I hopefully got more chance um, with Gringo Loco, and Gringo Loco was the better worker out of all four with a sixty. So um, Calvin Santman obviously performed well. Unfortunately, Jimmy Yang was not very good at all. I think I might end the Jimmy Yang Lee Johnson storyline soon. Um, and I think I might put Lee Johnson a bit higher up the card instead of being in a feud with Jimmy Yang. I think I might get rid of Jimmy Yang. But yeah, second one got a 49, 34 for the crowd rating and 46 for the wrestling. But yeah, Gringo Loco is our new heavyweight champion. That's exciting. Uh, increased the popularity again. 43 overall rating. Um, and then we got 250 people again. So I think next show I'm going to try and go for a bigger arena and see how we get on. So we'll go Gringo Loco. Great. Well, actually, I'm going to give him a. I'm going to give the man a hook. The man deserves a hook. And then Frontman Ja. We'll put him as a good example. Right. Seems Gringo Loco seems pleased. So Frontman Ja, come on, please work this time. There we go. Right. Ticket sales, 1,750. Um, merchandise is 250. So that basically pretty much covers most of the workers that we use. We did use quite a few, actually, to be honest. I reckon if we used less wrestlers, um, we would have probably had less of a loss. But I think we need certain wrestlers in there. So that's just how it is. But yeah, not too bad overall. I only lost 815. We leave. We finished the show with 15,257. We've increased our popularity again to 27. So like I said, every show, I don't know why, I don't know how I'm getting away with this, but we seem to be increasing our popularity of every show. We're on a very steady climb. It will take us a while, but we'll get there. I think the next step is to take a risk one way or another. I think we need to improve the production side of things and I think we need to get a TV deal even if it's just a cover I don't know I need to look into it I need to I need to figure it out because I don't want to um, get a TV deal and then it ends up costing us let's have a look let's see if anything has changed let's just reset that and then we'll click yes and we'll see what's available 
So I don't know. I don't know whether we should just give this one a, a try. Um, very high risk, highly pro wrestling, no focus. It doesn't tell us the cost though, does it? All right. I'm going to take a risk here. I'm going to go New Deal for events. We're going to go, right, so they don't want to do one year, which is fine. Okay. Uh, so they can do nine months. Should we do three months? We'll do three months to start off with, and we can always change that afterwards. They don't want to give us prime time. They're happy with on demand, which we don't want. Late night. Late night's slightly better than on demand. So if I go on demand, does that mean I get all the money? Oh, we'll just leave it. We'll leave it as late night. We can always change it afterwards if it doesn't work out. Right, default, and then we'll go. So the revenue split will be 10% to the company. Now, was that our company or was their company? I don't know. Um, right, so neither of us would pay anything per show for this in this deal. And they're not asking for exclusive rights to the footage. So that's not too bad. Right, if I'm just going to keep going here, let's see what happens. Right, so if I just go 100% to the company, I think that means our company, not their company. Let me know in the comment section if I've got that wrong. Right, so that's that. Now, do I go with independent wrestling as well? Do you know what? I'm going to go with independent wrestling as well. So they don't want it. So we'll go three months again. They're happy with all this. Obviously, it's on-demand service anyway. Um, we'll go as... We'll go 70, no, we won't go 70%. There we go. We'll go 60%, so that means it doesn't. we don't have to pay anything. Right, so that's that. And then should we try high spots as well? I'm going to leave YouTube, because maybe YouTube was the one that cost um, Curbstorm City that money. So we'll see how it goes. So new events, we'll go three months again. They're on demand. We'll go as high as we can. Right, 60% again. Right, so hopefully on the next show we'll figure out whether that's um, that's going to pay off or not, but we'll see. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the creative. Kevin Tampton obviously is still our biggest star, but hopefully that will change soon. Shane Mercer's climbed up the rankings a little bit. No, Nothing for next big things. Hot Prospects is slightly different. Davey Bang. Talk the Talk, Frontman Jar, Colt Cabana, Simon Dean, Rhino and Atticius Koga. Showstoppers, Gringo Loco, Calvin Santman, Nev uh, Nevia, Shane Mercer, Silas Young. She, uh, Ring General, we won't bother that much about who's hot at the moment. Heather Reckless, even though she bloody never wrestles for us. Um, Frontman Jar, Magdal Connolly. So they perceive him as a major star. Same with Lord Crow as well. Crew, sorry. So that's good that our tag champions are getting uh, more popular. Calvin Santman's down here at the moment because he's only just wrestled once in the last three months. And then who's not obviously there and then hidden gems let's have a look see if there's anybody worth bringing in no still the same really um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the roster and then we'll go uh, should we go see who's a major star right and then i need to change this um role wrestler there we go so Calvin Tantman, Front Manja, Gringo Loco, Heather Reckless, Kylie Ray, Lee Johnson, Law Pro, Mad Dog Conley, and Shane Mercer are our, apparently our major stars. So what we need to do now then is, where's popularity on here? Ah, there we go. Right, popularity. So if we go 50 popularity, let's see if that changes anything. Right, so we haven't got anybody that popular. Let's try 40. Right, so these are, right, let's try change this to 40, 45. Right, so Gringo Loco is our most popular overall star. So he is 42 in Great Lakes. Um, he's pretty much over everywhere he goes other than India. Let's track his progress. So yeah, so he is um, slightly getting more and more popular. He is 40 years old, so I don't think we'll be able to keep him in the long run. We asked him to, let's ask him if he can, physical, better shape. Ah, oh, there we go. I, thought, I forgot to do this. I need to, 
do this with some of my other wrestlers. I thought I'd done it in the last episode, but I must have forgot. Anyway, right, so that's that done. Um, let's have a look at the storylines. So, extremely hot heat at the moment for this one here. Extremely hot as well for that one. Reckless is only hot. So we need to basically end this storyline. So we're going to end this storyline. I'll add another female storyline offline before the next episode. Um, let's have a quick look at the top 100s. So our best show has been um, Murder Incorporated 2025, um, June 2025, so last year. Our best show this year has been Dirty Living in March 2026. Um, our best ever match was Kelvin Tankman defeating Gringo Loco. And that got a 60 rating, so we may, we'll have to run that back at some point. See, again, Kelvin Tankman's been in the best two matches that we've had, but yet he's just never really available. If he starts becoming available again, maybe I'll give him the title again at some point. We just need to trust. We need to hope that he, he, he stays a bit loyal to us. Um, biggest attendance has been 250. Anything else? No, that's it. Right, okay. So I think that's pretty much it for today's episode, unless there was something else, but I can't think of anything else. Right, I'm just going to save it here. And I'll, um, I'll be back next Monday with another episode, and I hope you like this one. Let me know in the comments section um, what you like and don't like about this series. I always appreciate feedback, and I'll... Um, I'll see you next Monday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll be back on Friday with my AEW Ring of Honor save on here. So, yeah. All right. All the best.